Hello, this is Carrie again, and I have another video for you today. Um, for today's video, I'm just going to talk about how I sharpen my pencils, because I've been doing these reviews for almost two years. We're going to Yosemite um, in a f like at the, in the middle of August, and um, I remember doing a video when I was last at Yosemite, um, so it's been about two years now that I've been doing these videos. Um, and in that time, I have sharpened an insane amount of pencils. It's literally out of control how many pencils I've sharpened. Um, and I've learned a few things um, about how to sharpen pencils to get the best results and what to look out for to see a problem before it starts to um, cause damage to a bunch of your pencils. So um, I'm going to talk about what I do and um, explain to you why different people have different ways of doing it and why in many ways there's really no right or wrong way to sharpen your pencils as long as you're getting the results that you want and that you know that you're happy with the end results that's really the part that counts but I'm only sh gonna show you like how I do it so um, so this video has taken a while for me to put together in part because I needed to have a bunch of pencils that needed to be sharpened and that I was okay with sharpening a bunch of pencils. To that end, I realized that um, I got a set of the 72 ink tents thanks to the patrons over on Patreon. Um, so there'll be a link to that down below so you guys can take a look at it and see if you're interested in helping to support the channel. But anyway, so, um, so thanks to the wonderful support from the patrons over on Patreon, I got a set of the 72 ink tents and they do come sharpened, but it's not as sharp as I would like. So I'm working on my review for the ink tents. Um, and I want to show you the, this is the panda that I'm doing with the ink tents pencils. And I use a little bit of blocks there and I want to show you the other page. Um, and so this is part of the reason why the ink tents review is taking so long because for the most part, when I do a review, I'll do just one page. Um, but in this case, I'm doing two pages because this is just like a completely, it's its own little medium. So um, so to that end, it's really taking me a while to do that. So anyway, so I have a bunch of these pencils. Let me see if I can zoom out and show you um, the way that they come. Is They come sharpened, but as I said, it's not really very sharp. You can see how not sharp that is. So for the most part, before I use all of these pencils, I'm gonna need to sharpen them um, pretty much without exception. There might be one or two that are sharpened well enough to use. So this is a great opportunity for me to get out my sharpeners and talk to you about all the different kinds of sharpeners that I have tried. Now, for the most part, what I've tried are manual sharpeners. And um, let me get some out for you of all the different kinds of manual sharpeners. There are crank and electric sharpeners that I haven't really tried in part because um, I don't really need them. And I live in a small um, New York City apartment. So there's not really any place to like install a whole bunch of crank sharpeners. Um, so this is what I have. So this is for the Prismacolor sharpener, which if you saw my original Prismacolor review, I recommended mainly for the fact that you can do a blunt end. And there, there are now um, a number of different sharpeners that will let you do um, a less sharp end so that you're less likely to get that breakage, um, including this one, which um, a friend of mine, um, Amy, just recommended to me. Um, and this one has a hole for small pencils and then a hole for larger pencils. But you can put a small pencil in this hole and very carefully get a more blunt end. Um, and I'm going to see if I have a pencil that I can show you that with because that's really fascinating. Um, and then I have this Faber-Castell one. And um, this is um, also Faber-Castell. This is one of the included sharpeners. And we're just going to use this as a stand-in for the included sharpeners. Um, and why, as a rule, I don't like them. Um, I know some people have had some luck with some included sharpeners. Also, you can use a knife to sharpen your pencil. This is uh, my bigger Swiss Army knife, Amy. <laughs> Amy was making fun of my tiny Swiss Army knife that I used in a different video. Um, but anyway, but I have a larger Swiss Army knife. Um, and um, so you can use a any kind of knife, but I like to have a Swiss Army knife around. Um, so there's that. And then the other one, the ones that I mainly use are the bullet, 
this Alvin, which is in a glass bottle, which I got from a fan. Thank you so much for sending me this. And a um and this other one, which is um Mobius and Rubius. Um, but the thing about these three is they all use the same blades. So I'm gonna get into blades in a minute, but this is this is why these three are my favorites. All right. So let, let me first talk about the included sharpeners in which I'll use this one. This is actually quite a high quality included sharpener because at the very least the blade is replaceable and it's made in Germany. The flip side is I don't know exactly what kind of blade this will take. The included blade, this isn't very sharp at all what's here. Um, let me see. Um, it worked okay for the small pencil but it didn't really work for the large pencil. Let's uh, take a try at it. This you can see this is a relatively uh, blunt and you can see that it comes it's not as sharp as I would like it so it's not really ready for use so I'm gonna put it in here um, you can see when when the pencil when oh it's it's actually not that bad um, so what what's to like here is the fact that you can get a relatively sharp point not as sharp as I would like um, and you know it worked okay it it was a little bit difficult starting but you know, this is not too bad, um, especially since you can replace the blades. Um, you just have to figure out which blades work. Uh, but the, the problem that I usually have with these, um, these sharpeners is that the actual sharpener part is not made in Germany. And for me, I want the whole thing to be made in Germany. Um, it's not really necessary. The main part is that your blade is made in Germany. Um, but if your blade is made in Germany um, and you can replace the blade, that's gonna be really where you're gonna get your money's worth. And I'm gonna show you in a minute why it's important to be able to have one where you can replace the blade. So you have something like this. This is another um, fabric Castell one. And hold on, this closes and opens up a weird way. It's kind of gimmicky and cute, but the blade, as you can see, it doesn't use a regular Phillips screwdriver. It doesn't use a regular, like a regular Phillips head. This requires a special head, which I don't have and um, it's it's technically possible to replace the blade, but it's not gonna be something that you're gonna be doing relatively often or relatively easily because of the nature of the special screw that it needs and the fact that it's not, um, you know, it's not a regular one. So anyway, so this is not something that, even though I tend to like the Faber-Castell and I like the fact that it has the different holes for all the different pencils, I still would pass on something like this. This is more of a gimmick, you know, it has one side to let out the shavings and I mean, it's cool, but then what happens when the blade goes dull? That's kind of the problem I run into that. And um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a similar problem with this one. Although this one does have a regular screw, I'm not sure what blade you would use to replace it. Um, and the blade does not say made in Germany on the blade. So I would pass on that, um, unless you need it for the, for the blunt end. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to get a blunt end out of the other one. So then we have tried all these different ones. So then we're back to why I like this one. Um, I did a video and there'll be a link up there on how to replace the blade for your sharpeners. And that to me is absolutely the most important part in your manual sharpeners because they will get dull and especially if you use them a lot, um, you know, they will get dull. And then once they start to get dull, then you start losing your pencil core and you don't really want to lose your pencil core. So um, the other thing that a lot of people say about sharpening your pencil that I found to be not necessarily true is if you see videos, they'll often tell you to move the, the, um, the sharpener and not the, and not the pencil. The reason for this is because you, you want to have a little bit of give when you sharpen your pencil. Like you don't want to force it when you turn it, you want to turn it, but you, you want it to just glide across the blade. Like if it feels forced then you stop um, because you know, you're either, you're either done or there's a problem with the blade. So that's kind of why they tell you to move the, the, the sharpener um, because you're less likely to force it that way. And, um, and that's kind of the main reason why they tell you to do that. But if you can do it with the, oh, look at this. This is supposed to be pre-sharpened, but look at that. Well, it's not pre-sharpened at all. That's not pretty sharpened at all. Um, but if you see how I do it, how I move, it's very gentle. Hold on, let me see if I can, hold on. I may have to, I'm gonna move this out so you can see my hands 
and you can see how it's it's I'm just having the the pencil glide along the blade hold on all right so hopefully now we have a little bit more room and you can see me actually move the the pencil you can see me actually hold the pencil when I move this over move this out so that it's easier to focus but I want you to look at my hand here and you'll see that I let go and it's a very gentle turn it's not a hard turn at all and um, and that's kind of the the most important thing is that it's a gentle turn this blade probably needs to be replaced soon I'm gonna switch sharpeners because I think this blade needs to be replaced soon um, you can tell when the blade needs to be replaced when it doesn't give you a clean cut and it come, doesn't come out in one piece. If it comes out all in one piece, then you're golden. Um, and this is the same, this uses the same kind of blade, although this blade I found is a little bit bigger, but it's the same, it's the same company that makes it. See, you see how the, the shaving is coming out a little bit cleaner in this one? So that's one thing is that you can tell once you start doing this for a while, you can tell when the sharpener needs to be, when the blade needs to be replaced. So you see how this is coming out in one clean piece compared to the other one? I probably need to do this a little bit more, but I don't want to over sharpen it while I have you on camera. But let me go back to the other one and just show you that that's one of the main things is to know when your sharpener blades needs to be replaced. You see how that's not coming out? as clean and it's coming out in little sections, that's not ideal and that's definitely a sign that you either need to tighten the screw, replace the blade. Sometimes what I do is I take the blade out and I just put it back in the same with the same blade and it works a little bit better. Um, but you don't want to have your shavings coming out like that. You want your shavings to come out nice and cleanly um, if the, the pencil is a good pencil. Um, you see how that comes out nice and cleanly? So there's that. Um, and by the way, with these ink tents, you can actually save this little, save these little, um, the shavings and use that. That's usable pigment. The only reason I'm not doing it is because I'm doing the demonstration for the video, but that's usable pigment. You see how that's coming out nice and clean? This is a fresh blade. This is a good blade. And you can just keep going like this. Um, so that's the other thing to keep in mind. Let me show you with this one how you can use this and um as you saw hold on let me let me show you once again with this one that you see the way that my hand is moving very gently and you just have it glide along the blade you don't want to force it you don't want to use a lot of force if you force it that's when you start breaking your pencils that's when you start breaking the tips and that's the thing that people that the reason why people say to move the sharpener now if you if you feel comfortable to have this kind of a hand, if you feel like you can't really get this kind of a gentle hand moving the pencil, then go ahead, try moving the 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 sharpener instead. Um, but I'm just explaining to you why, why it is that people say that um, is one of the reasons is that you put a little bit too much force on it and you kind of force it in. This way you're just giving it a gentle turn. And you can see that even though I'm just giving it a gentle turn and I'm not, you know, there's not really any force being applied to it. It's just coming out nice and clean. So, um, so that's another that's another aspect of it. The same thing with this. Now, with something like this, this is a I would call this a, probably I might even want to call this. It's stupid. It's kind of stupid, but I feel like calling this this is a more advanced level sharpener. I'm not sure if I would recommend this being a first sharpener because you still have to watch. Like if you're doing this, you still have to watch what you're doing it, and it can be a little bit difficult to see the shavings in there. Um, as well as to see if there's anything stuck in there. Um, so, so there's that with this one. So I, you know, I like this sharpener because it has a, um, it has a reservoir. Um, but you know, you, you do have to be careful with this. The other thing too, to keep in mind when you get these sharpeners and the other reason why I really, really love having one that has a replaceable blade, I'm going to clean all this up before it gets wet and um, stains the floor is that sometimes when you get a sharpener and you get it brand new the blade is either not aligned properly or it's or it's you know or there was something wrong in the factory especially with these alvin ones where even though it's brand new you still might need to replace the blade um, and that's something to keep in mind um, 
when you're getting these kinds of sharpeners, the ones that I that I like. Um, and this is just, as I said before, this is just for me, this is just one way to do it. Um, another way to do it is, as I said earlier, to use, um, some people have, um, some people, hi Stewie, this is baby Stewie. Oh, you see his butt, baby Stewie. He wants dry food, um, but he got he got wet food already today, and it's way past his dinner time. Um, so he's really not supposed to get any more food because it's like after midnight or whatever. Um, but you know, whatever. So I'm just showing you once again, you know, and then you you know it's okay to stop periodically and to um, and to check to see if you have it as sharp as you want. The other thing that I sometimes do more with this, more with this bottle one than with this one is I sometimes will, before I take it out, is I'll just do a little back turn. Um, and it will leave a little bit of a thing, but it might make it easier to pull it out of this one without having any damage to it. So I promised you guys I would show you the other nifty trick you can do with this one. Now this end is for big, it's for big pencils, but if you are really gentle with it, you can get it to sharpen these. Once again, you're just really gentle and you can get a more blunter end. <laughs> Isn't that cool? You can get, if you would like a more blunter end, you can get a more blunter end this way. You just have to be a little careful about what you're doing. This blade probably needs to be replaced on this end. Um, so let me show you the difference. And there's also the tag sharpeners that people use. I don't know if that's if I'm pronouncing. It's like T G A A L, um, and it gives you the those basically go from this end to this end and all the in between um, sections. Um, once again, that is an okay sharpener, but I don't like it because you can't replace the blade. Um, but you can see the difference uh, that you can get the both ends with that sharpener. And I think that we are done here. Um, if you guys have any questions about, um, about the, the way that I choose to sharpen my pencil, um, if you guys have a different way, let me know down in the comments what you guys do instead. Uh, so um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you everybody on Patreon for helping to support the channel because I got the ink tents and I will be doing a review um, and I'm super excited. I will have two images finished for you for this for the ink tents review when it goes live and when it goes live there'll be a link right there. Um, so thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Oh and if you guys don't normally stay at the end, stay for the end because there's a video of Bella being Bella and it's adorable. All right, bye. Bellita, <laughs> Oh, 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 Oh